Hi there Thunkers, and welcome to another video. In this video, we will be discussing cloud variables. We will be following on from our previous video where we used stored variables to create a sign-in screen to discuss how you can use cloud variables to save your user's data. Let's start by comparing cloud variables to app and stored variables. Like stored variables, cloud variables are initialized with no value. Unlike app and stored variables, which are saved to the device, Cloud variables are saved to the cloud, hence the name, in a Firebase real-time database. This of course means that the updated values are saved between app sessions as the updated value is not saved to the device in the first place. And this also means that cloud variables can be accessed from multiple devices. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that while you can store any data type as an app variable or a stored variable, you can only save a string of text or an object as a cloud variable. Now that we've covered that, let's start on our app. Now we're starting with the project that we built in our previous video. I'm just going to rename screen 1 to sign up screen and screen 2 to sign out screen. Then we'll add a new screen and call it profile screen. We'll drop the profile screen in between sign up and sign out in our project. And in the sign up screen, we'll say that when our user signs in successfully, it will be brought to the profile screen. Then I'll just drop my profile screen and my sign out screen into a drawer navigator so that it's easy to navigate between the two screens in my project. And I might just color our profile screen in green to keep the focus on the right screen. In this project, we're going to display the user's name and profile picture. Let's start by adding a label to display the user's name. We can call this name label and its initial text can say no name. And we'll add in a button, we'll call it name button to let the user change their name. I'm going to go for a pretty simple design here, but you can make this button look however you want. Just like in our sign-in screen, we're going to create a group with some components that we can show and hide at will, so that when the user wants to change their name, they will see a text input where they can type their new name, a save button, and a cancel button, which we'll just make red and put a big X on here. We'll hide that for now, and we'll add an image component to let the user display their profile picture, and just like before, we'll add a little button to let the user change their profile picture. Let's call that image button. Just like with the name, we'll design a group that will pop up when the user wants to change their profile picture. And when the user sees this group, we'll let them either take a photo, upload a photo, or cancel again. And of course, we'll want to call that first group name group and this second group image group, just so that they're easier to tell apart in the blocks. In the blocks, of course, we'll want to say that when the profile screen opens, we'll want to look at the details we have saved to the cloud. Unlike our other projects, we are not going to use an initialize block for this cloud variable. Instead, we're going to create a dynamically named cloud variable. You may remember in our previous project that when we saved the user in, we saved their user ID as an app variable called user ID. Now we are going to take that app variable user ID and use it to set the name of this cloud variable. This means that each user who signs in will get a uniquely named cloud variable to store their unique user data. We're going to start by saying what we'll do if this cloud variable is null. This step should help you visualize what you're doing when you're working with a cloud variable. So let's say that if we have not already saved a value to this cloud variable, then we'll set our cloud variable, which is named after the user ID, to an object. This object will have two properties, name and image. And of course, if we have not saved anything to these yet, then we'll initialize this object to have null values for both of these properties. Now let's talk about saving values to these properties. We'll start by making things easy for ourselves. If the user clicks the little plus button to change their name, we'll show the name group. And if in this name group they click the red cancel button, then we'll hide the name group again without changing anything. However, if our user clicks the save button, then we will save their username as a property of our cloud variable app user ID. The way we will do this is we will save it to the cloud variable app user ID slash name. You can consider this to be similar to how when you're finding a file on your computer, you might go to user slash documents. Once we have saved this cloud variable, we can display its value on the label. And if you want to do something like make sure the username is not blank, then of course we'll go back to the profile screen, we'll put in another sort of error label, and in the box we'll say that if the text inputs text is empty, then we'll show on this error label the warning that name cannot be blank and we won't update the username. And of course, if the user does successfully update their username, then we can hide the rename group again because they don't need to look at it anymore. Now let's take a look at the blocks for changing the user's profile picture. 
Just like with the name blocks, if the user clicks the image button to change their profile picture, then we will show the image group. And if in this image group, they click the cancel button, then we will hide the image group again. And I actually didn't name my upload button, so let me do that now. But let's start with programming our take button. Of course, if the user clicks take, then we'll open up the camera to take a photo. And I'll use the advanced blocks for the camera here. The user may decide to cancel taking a photo. Let's only run these blocks if the action was not cancelled. If there's an error, we will print it on our error label. And if there's no error, then of course we want to save our image to the cloud under our cloud variable user ID slash image. However, we cannot save the photo file as a cloud variable. We have to use a text or object. We can do this with the upload media block to upload the photo the user took to the cloud. As usual, if there's an error, then we'll print the error. But if there's no error, then we'll save the resulting URL as our cloud variable user ID slash image. Once we have saved this photo to our cloud variable, then we can set the picture of our image component to this cloud variable. And I know that that was a little complicated, but the good news is that when the user clicks the upload block, we just need to make sure we're using the image from photo library block instead of the photo from camera block. And then we can copy and paste all the rest of these blocks in. And of course, now that we've allowed the user to set their name and profile picture in the cloud, we want to make sure that we display the correct name and correct profile picture every time the user signs into the app. To do this, we'll say that when our profile screen opens, if our cloud variable user ID is not null, then we will set the name label to display the name property of this cloud variable, and we'll set our image component to display the image property of this cloud variable. Of course, as discussed in the previous video, you do need to make sure that your project is connected to your own Firebase real-time database, and again, you can find information about this in our docs. You'll find a link to these docs and this project in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and as ever, thanks for thunking.